did it all, man. I partied, went all over the world. I've been, I flew all over the world being an exotic entertainer, had all the women, had all the money, all of that until it didn't satisfy me anymore. None of that stuff really satisfied me. The only thing that I ever really truly wanted to was, was to, was to find and be my greatest self. And so what happened was I, I, I transferred this, this shallow life that I was living as this beautiful man, as the, you know, the sex symbol. And then I transferred that over into a skill that I had, which was Barbara. And I was like, how can I not do this and still make the money that I'm making? So I figured I'll take this money that I have and go to school. And I got my barber's license. Well, got my barber's license and other people were like, oh, what barbershop I'm going to work at? Me, I was always thinking, what do you mean barbershop you're going to work at? I'm about to have my own barbershop. So, I, so what I did was I made a little space in my my little apartment that I would had and I got I knew that you know I was living in Atlanta and I knew and I and I looked at my marketing as far as who was I gonna cut hair for. And I said, who gets their hair cut the most? Well, gay people, you know, homosexual men, I marketed them because they care about their looks more than anybody. And they pay big bucks for it. And gay people love, they like the way I look. So I would flirt with them. So it didn't matter. I would you know what I'm saying I used that to my advantage as well. I of course, I was just an entertainer, so I would use my looks as my advantage anyway. I said, my, my barbershop is going to be called Bishop's HD Cuts. I've always had a, a vast imagination, and I know that if I could think about it and I talk about it and I assess about it, and everything that I did was talk about Bishop's HD Cuts, man. Every my, No matter what you were talking to me about, I would kind of turn the conversation into Bishop's <laughs> HD Cuts. You know, I was so obsessed with the barbershop, I could feel it. I Atlanta is a big uh, hub for visiting. So I would go to the hotels. I got a barber license. I could cut your hair right here. I was a mobile barber. I, it doesn't matter. I could cut your hair right now. Do you know what a barbershop when you come to Atlanta? No, you don't. I have. I sit down, have a drink, talk to some guys. Yo, I'm a barber. You need your hair cut while you're here because you're going to go out this weekend. I, I made a killing off of that right there. And then the, what happened is the hotel concierge, that would, I would give them my business card and pay them a uh, percentage to everybody that they recommend. So what, what happened was I, I wound up being very successful as a mobile barber, meeting all kind of people. I actually went on a Monique show, cut hair for her, and I started cutting hair for celebrities. It just went there. You know, I was always good at marketing and dreaming, but I'm always talking about Bishop AC business cards. You would never know that I, that I was living in this little apartment. I got it within eight months. I got a barbershop. Somebody just gave me 25000 because I was so enthusiastic about it. I was always talking about it. And it was like, won't you just open up a barbershop? I was like, yeah, well, I don't have the finances right now, but I'm going to have it. Randomly just says, man, I didn't, I didn't ask you if you had the money. Get me a business plan. I said, what do you mean? Get me a business plan. I said, wow, are you serious? Guess what? One of my other clients was a business uh, administrator. He made my business plan for me. My <laughs> other client made my logo for me. And then the other client found the location for me. I, all of my, all of what I needed was right in front of me. I just used all my resources and I was so excited about it. It, it manifested so quick. I was dreaming about it. It, you know, people would, my, my, my current girlfriend was trying to argue with me and I would just be like, yeah, but the barbershop, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like, you know and I was like, what about the barbershop? You're not even, in, you're not even thinking about it. You know what I'm saying? So I've always been someone that could imagine myself into something you know, my barbershop was so good that other barbershops near me was asking to sell their shops to me, you know, and go in with me 50-50. And so the neighborhood, I would buy the salons because women run the neighborhood. People don't know that. You know, if you're going in the community, you got to show love to the females because they run the community. People don't realize that because they have the kids. And so because I was cool with the salons, they would tell the mothers to bring their kids to me. <laughs> you know, this is like it was a strat. I strategized that, and to the point where everybody's coming to my barbershop, you know. And then I had a chess set in there, and I would tell everybody like, uh, "If you could beat me in chess, I'll give you a free haircut." Of course, nobody beat me. I'm really good at playing chess, <laughs> um, you know. So and and so people would come just to hear me speak because I was also I always been someone that was speaking knowledge and information, and you know. And um, people would, you know, I just really good, I made good relationships with people in the high, well been the guy that took over the whole town and had a, 
you know, franchise of barbershops and you just been successful in that way. But I, that wasn't good enough for me. I've always been a spiritual seeker. And so I met people that I can intellectually speak with. You know, we would meet up for dinner and, and, and have just these arguments and discussions. And that, that is what sparked me. I was like, you know what? And I would go back the dynamic of the group I was uh, dealing with with my barbershop. And it was just like, this is not the same thing. And so for me, I got an RV. Yeah, me, me. I got an RV. Young black guy, <laughs> little family. I said, I'm going to get an RV. Now, they don't give these RVs away very cheap. So basically, I had to find an RV spot where, you know, you, you, you make a down payment and they would let you, they would trust you on that down payment. I had to, so I traveled all the way to Alabama, got an RV. And mind you, I'm this black kid from the hood pulling up in an RV in the hood. And everybody's like, yo, how you, what's that? You know, they never seen this, but I inspired all of them. They were like, yo, I'm like, you got a dream, man. You got to see past all of this. This is all good, but you know, you got to see past all of this. And I'm, and I've helped them open up their minds and show them that they could be way more than what they are doing. Then I took that RV and my current um, situation with the, with the woman I was with and her children. And I, and, and I've always had this deep connection with nature. So I just wanted to travel the coast of Florida. I traveled the whole coast of Florida, stayed at all the RV parks. And here I am pulling up in my, in my RV, you know, it's nothing but elder white people out there, you know, that retired in their, in their fishing boats and stuff. Like, yo, this is when I knew I was different. <laughs> like I'm, I'm a young black family living in an RV and they're like, what is it? And I'm running my barbershop actually. And I'm, you know, at the same time and I got a chance to get in touch with nature and be out in the, in the middle of the woods and be close to it and understand it. And man, Florida was beautiful. Just the coast. I just got to be out there in nature. And I knew that right then I belong, I belong closer to nature. But when I left, my barbershop started to fall apart because I was leaving it. They needed me to inspire them all the time. They had to keep that inspiration and start to fall off. And so, you know, it started to crumble away slowly. And so I had to come back. So I descended back to my lower self. One thing I learned about Babylon is if you're going to be in Babylon, you're going to have to be all the way in Babylon. So you, so I went all the way back into Babylon. You know, I become the barbershop, become the community. And so I went and I made that barbershop. I built the stage in the barbershop and opened up an open mic for the kids to come in and the community and come in and, you know, have a voice. I put a tattoo artist in the back. Um, it, it, I had, you know, natural hair girl, I, you know, we did shampoos with our cuts, $7 Tuesdays. It was, I got it all back running, you know, you can use your card now, you, you know, and I, and I put all of this in it and then boom, at that point I was basically, uh, coming into a more awakening state where, uh, I was, I had the biggest house on the block in my neighborhood in Rex. I, I, I just stopped working in the barbershop. I just couldn't be around the conversations and the ignorance no more. I was like, I start separating myself from it. Coming out of Florida, coming back to that, it gave me a headache after a while. I've separated myself. I got a shop manager and I'm my, my, my house is right up the block. So they just, so this, this is where it happened. This is where it happened. This is where my spiritual awakening happened. Now I got that freedom and I, I gave somebody my barber chair. The, the manager would come to me, knock on my door on a Saturday, give me the boot friend. I'm right up the block. If anything, you need me. So it was running. I was just right down the block now. And with this time right here, I start having the most magical moments as far as, you know, dreams, leaving my body, opening up other portals of dimensions and meeting beings. And, you know, all of these things start happening, the phenomena, you know, I never forget when it first started because it wasn't, it wasn't pretty. It wasn't pretty. I was... Uh, dreaming, having dreams and opening up realms where there was these dark beings and these dark beings were shadow beings and they were, they were just, you know, ugly beings that wanted to touch me and I was made of light and they was trying to touch me and it was all, it was a lot of crazy things I was having. I would, I would fall asleep in a nap and I would see shadows running, shoo, shoo, you know, it's just, you know, so I wanted to understand what this was. Like, why was I dreaming about this stuff? You know, this stuff piqued my mind. So, I, you know, with, these, with this stuff, I start researching. What's going on with this? Like, what's going on with me? What's, what's happening to me? I got scared of going to sleep because I was having sleep paralysis. Um, 
I was forgetting what days were, what day it was. I was getting really heavy into spirituality to the point where my dreams scared me into to spirituality to the point where basically I was scared to fall asleep. And I wanted to make my dreams right because if I knew I find, I had to fall asleep eventually. So when I did fall asleep, I wanted to make sure that I went to a happy place. At night, I'm trying not to uh, fall asleep. I'm up all night, scared to fall asleep, obviously, seeing these dark beings and stuff like that and things chasing me and all of those things that were stuck in my subconscious. So as I studied what dreams realms was i started to understand like wait a minute this is my subconscious this is only me like i know this stuff i can i can control this so basically i reprogrammed my subconscious mind if it wasn't positive i did not put it in my mind positive affirmations at night so if i'm gonna go to sleep it's some positivity that's playing throughout my ears so that's my subconscious it'll, it'll help assist me in going to a nice place when i do go into a place and it worked it, it completely worked and so what i realized is that the cleaner I ate, the, the, the less beings I seen. I, I went to higher places. It was more beautiful places. With I was falling asleep, and my I, another set of eyes opened. It's the only thing I could say. I know I was laying in the bed, but another set of eyes opened. And basically, I was standing up in another realm. It was, it was like more real than this realm. And I was slipping into different realities. I was in a hospital bed. Then I was in another realm where I was balled up into a ball and everything was upside down. This is when everything started because I, I just knew, stop taking showers. Stop taking showers. Just stop taking showers. Stop taking showers. That was when it all started. I start eating just fruit. I started arguing with vegans. Like, listen, we can't eat plants. I just knew things. I knew things. I started studying what America was, what money was, breaking my reality down to a molecule, all alchemizing, looking around me saying, damn, this stuff is made from wood. This stuff is made from metal. What is plastic made from? Plastic is made from oil. Okay, we got oil, wood, and metal. They all come from the earth. What do, you know, why don't we live more eco-friendly? Then I'll just start going into, you know, becoming more peaceful with who I am. I didn't want to be no longer be a part of anything that was destroying anything else, whether that was a person or a plant, because I knew that all the life, I just had this vast respect for life. And that point, everything starts falling apart girlfriend is looking at me like I'm crazy. I stopped cutting my hair, start looking like a real crazy mom. You know what I'm, saying? <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know if you can, you can, you can curse say whatever you want. Tell, I, I was looking, I started looking like a crazy mf -er. and people were like, dude, you good. They would come drop the money off for the shop. And I was like, I was looking like just hair crazy, you know, <laughs> put on a t-shirt, t-shirt with the neck. I'm like, what's up, man? Do you realize what's going on? And, um, and people just like, yo, dude, we don't want to hear that, you know? And so life for me in Babylon became very uncomfortable because I knew too much. What happened was I gave the barbershop away. I gave cars away. I gave all, I gave all, all that I owned away. Who I was as bishop was dying. And I said, I'm a philosopher. I am a, I am a spiritual leader. I am a spiritual being. I don't, I'm a spiritual teacher. That's what I am. And I knew I was because it's the only thing that made me happy. You can't talk to me about anything else. I don't want to talk to, any, to you about anything else. Let's talk about things that truly matter. Let's talk about agriculture companies and how, how we're eating ourselves to death. Let's talk about chemtrails. Let's talk about all of these matters. That's what truly matters. Why is everybody walking around like we're not getting sprayed like, like, like a farm? Animals in a zoo don't know that the zoo is not normal. Just because we're born there, it, it doesn't make it okay. And so I've awoken and I realized I started understanding a lot of things. And I was just talking to people, regular people in my life, and they got tired of hearing me and I didn't have an outlet. That's what happened. One day, guess what happened? I never forget the update. Facebook got live. Woo! Facebook live. <laughs> Facebook live. Bring. Just talking to a camera and saying stuff to a camera is no good for me. I have to talk to people. When you do Facebook Live, you can feel that you're talking to someone. I was in love. It was me, my fruit. I took out my bed in my room because I knew that was no good for my back. And my back was important because it, my spine carries information to my, to my brain. And I want to be most conducive. Open up the windows, turn off the artificial lights, go into the darkness, all of this. And so I started talking to people about my journey. I said, I'm leaving. I'm getting out of here, man. We got to get closer to the sun. 
We all belong in the tropics. All of humanity belong in the tropics. Why are we living so far out of the tropics, but we take all of our food and resources from that area? We are forcing ourselves to live in an unnatural state. And I was like, I don't want to do that anymore. We have to leave here. Global warming is coming. We're destroying. Why do you want to be a part of this bullshit that's happening, man? I don't even want to be a part of none of this. I'm not even living if I do live that way. I'm already dead anyway. So shit, I'd rather die a good life. If I'm going to go out, this is what I was thinking at the time. And I, then I realized I was immortal and I won't die and I have everlasting life. And I became somebody that became somebody that, you know, people start talking about, like, this dude is crazy. <laughs>